Hey guys, what's happening? So, working on a uh, 2002 Jeep Compass and uh, for a family member here. And the safety restraint lines kind of intermittent, comes on and off. And uh, one of the issues, like one of my, all my traditional scan tools um, won't read uh, SRS codes, the airbag codes. So, I went to O'Reilly, picked this one up. It says specifically that this SRS. So okay, I can figure that out. So with my other cars, like my uh, wife's car, I actually have the dealer tool, and then also for my Ford truck, I have the I, I just, or the I, the both the the Ford or the factory tools, the software and stuff. So I can do more thorough diagnostics with those cars, but I don't have anything for Mopar. So um, actually, I even tried to look online to see if I could get like a like a crack over here or whatever. But um, Okay, well, let's take a look at this thing. Hopefully, I can. Uh, it does what it, it could, well it does what it says it can do. I mean, it was 105 bucks, probably 112 out the door. So it just looks like it's ABS live stream data. So that's pretty cool. I mean, it's tire pressure. Okay, well, I mean, if you can really do SRS codes, that would be helpful because the thing is, I don't know what's going on with this thing. Like with these modern cars, they have uh, crash sensors all around the cars and. Um, you know, it's also integrated into your seat belts and like on your under seat thing. So if one of these sensors is going out, it can you don't you don't know. I mean, I've already cleaned all the connectors and all the sensors, and so I don't, I don't know. So um, yeah, something's telling the computer that there's something wrong here, and I don't know what it is. So oh yeah, I forgot that I had to tell you. I actually I use torque a lot on my my Ford truck, just as like extra gauges. Um, and the torque app couldn't pick up the SRS codes. So, um, it's the same concept, too. It's like, uh, I'm running Elm 327 on the Torque app, but this one is, has its own uh, dongle. It's OBD, uh, OBD2 dongle. So, it looks like I'm going to have to just obviously go to an app store and download an app. And All right, we'll see if this thing can do what it says it can do. I grabbed my kid's tablet, um, so it would be a bigger screen. So, Repair Solutions 2. What's interesting, too, is they're right down the street from me. They're not very far away from me. They're in Irvine. Install that. I hope you can see that in the camera. And then I'll go through the install process like that. And then I'll come back once we're down ready to start scanning tools or scanning uh, codes. You can see that. The glare kind of sucks. So I have it plugged into the adapter. Turn on Bluetooth. Continue. It's I'm not sure if the firmware updates on the dongle itself or the application, but I just downloaded the application, so I wouldn't think it was that. Okay, the fact that it's saying updating bootloader, that means it's obviously running some sort of ARM processor on the dongle. Um, yeah, there's just so many things. I mean, if you've seen my other videos, I, I work with a lot with Linux, system on chip Linux, firewalls, cameras. Uh, I work in IT, and I, I, mean, I, I build Linux based servers all day long. Um, alright, so this, so bootloader means me, makes, makes me think ARM processor. Alright, well I won't go into too many technical details, but the bootloader is kind of like a computer BIOS and tells us where to boot from. And now it's updating the firmware, which is actually the application that runs on the ARM processor. Yeah, I'm actually am becoming more of a fan of these, uh, internet-based, these phone-based, uh, I mean, I, I mean, I have a tons of scan tools. You know, I've been doing this for a long time, but um, I do actually kind of like these tablet phone-based ones because they can immediately go online and uh, you know get more detail about a code. So you don't have to you don't have to write down the code and go back over to your, like your your machine and like a computer and look it up. You can just do it right from the tablet or device. Live stream data. That's cool. Yeah, that and it always updates itself too. So like with the latest codes and cars, you know, with a lot of these devices, when you buy them, those codes are factory flash in there and there's no way you can update the device. So, I mean, if you have a 10-year-old tool, it has 10-year-old codes. I mean, I do actually like the fact that it does updates. That means so in the future, if something changes, you can update the dongle. All right, so from updated, it rebooted. Kind of sucks it's a bad light, might the sun. Okay, success, continue. 
retail now okay so hopefully this thing can communicate on the CAN bus so the CAN bus is a sort of like a small network inside your car that connects all the modules it's like you're gonna have different modules in the car you'll have your main you know the computer which runs your engine um, then you'll have like a transmission module body security module and there's a lot of different modules for different things but they communicate via the CAN protocol all right so I know there's something wrong with the engine, so maybe I could do custom. Why is it wondering on that? Okay, 100,000. One. Well, what I want to do is I want to check the airbag. So, because I know the engine's not, you know, that's fine. I'm really hoping this SRS thing shows up. I don't know which one it is, but I'll perform a custom scan. Yeah, it looks like it scans everything. It's definitely not fast, though. <laughs> so if you're in a hurry, don't get this. <laughs> or prepare yourself for like a couple hours, because, I mean, just getting the thing, the firmware update on that thing cost, took 15 minutes. Scanning tire pressure, so, yeah, it looks like it's pretty thorough, but... We'll see. So I went back into my garage where the, the light's better. All right, that's a pretty cool little thing. I says I found three results, but so I'm still fairly close to the car. So we're gonna tire pressure. Okay, I mean that's twelve. I have that. Uh, even has recalls. That's, that's actually really really cool. 80 any boltons. You know, this is definitely more advanced than let's say like torque, you know, obviously, you know, it's a hundred dollar tool. Um, but I mean these things are, you know, these scan tools like these tablets that you buy are thousands of dollars. Like the autels and stuff. Alright, and what was the three codes found? Let's see the result. Occupant Restraint Controller. Driver Airbag Squib. So that tells me that's exactly what I wanted to see. Um, Alright. I think I got my money's worth. <laughs> Headlamp switch, input circuit, fog lamp switch, input circuit. So I think these were related to the, uh, these were related to that, that thing. The, in my last video I did a, uh, you know, the turn signal switch was all jacked up. Um, so I don't know, like I said, I don't know if they were part of the same circuit or not. But that is actually really, really cool. Well, I actually, I really don't feel bad for spending hundred dollars now um, on a tool I didn't know it was going to be good or not. So, but I am actually surprised. Yeah, I mean, this actually is a lot. Now, I mean, if you ever see some of these factory tools like the Ford, uh, I think it's called IDS, and the uh, the the GM stuff. I mean, the the software programs look like they're from the eighties or nineties. You know, like old school looking programs. They got to work on the user interface of those things. This is nice and graphical. All right, cool. So uh, I'm gonna do some troubleshooting. I'm gonna figure out what those codes actually really mean. I wonder if I can actually get more information on exactly what that means online. Well, at least it tells me what it is and gives me the code. Like my other code scanners wouldn't even give me this code. It wouldn't. Oh, it wouldn't communicate with that module. Alright, so that's the end of this video, and it actually does what it's supposed to do, and it's pretty cool. Um, yeah, so that basically told me I need to look at a new clock spring um, part it out, so it's weird. There's a huge difference between, you know, spending $40 on eBay and, um, you know, 300 and something at O'Reilly, you know, 350 out the door probably. Um, 
What's funny is they're probably both made in the same factory, though. I don't know. These are, you know, it's all made in China, so it's hard to say if it's you made in the same factory or there's just using even super cheaper components. I'm not sure. But, I mean, it looks like it's all pretty low-quality plastic, so. All right, guys, cool, it worked.